In this video we're going to take a look at the uh, power consumption and power metering of a, uh, a road track. This is a popular 190 with a uh, aftermarket power meter that's being installed on the 120 volt receptacle. So it has like a, a 30 amp circuit plugged into a 15 amp power supply. So I've been uh, working on the uh, AV console in this vehicle and I've added a uh, a power meter to it. This is a, a PM8000 power meter. These are actually pretty expensive. You probably wouldn't normally buy one of these for a, a road track. I was able to get this used on eBay. So this one runs on 24 volt DC. A lot of them run on uh, AC power supplies. So this one is good because you can have it running before you plug in to the power supply or to shore power or before you start on a generator so basically it's a power meter that need, so it needs to measure your uh, AC voltage and your uh, AC current so with this if you follow the instructions on the manual for wiring this up you wire up uh, the line voltage and the neutral into this block here and just use like uh, stake on connector kind of thing whereas on the uh, current you always use the ring terminals and you can see I just got my uh, grounds bonded together I'm going to be installing a, a box for this in the future but uh, right now I've got the voltage just kind of turned off so to do this if you're an electrician you're probably already in dismay but this has got a 4x4 four four box just a PVC box with uh, four connectors on the outside and then I've got uh, three conductor 14 tray cable and then for the uh, metering side of things and then the uh, road track between the transfer switch and the electrical panel there is a uh, two conductor 10 with the ground that goes between these if I was to do this again I would replace this two conductor 10 because it's very stiff being solid wire and I'd probably uh, run some kind of different kind of cable as well. I wouldn't run cab tire. I definitely don't recommend that. The tray cable can have multi designations. So basically, the uh, black wire goes through a current transformer, which you can't really see. I'll post a link to all these supplies so you can take a look at it. But realistically, this is not a, a beginner's kind of job. I've been doing this kind of thing as from supervising perspective, not as an electrician installing hundreds of these power meters so I'm pretty familiar with it so anyway you run the uh, black wire through and moret it and then you have to run the neutral around it then you have a power tap that goes into the circuit breaker so I just had it off so now it's going to start reading current and you have a, a ground in here so you can see I got 123 volts going to the power meter. This power meter is pretty neat. It's got two Ethernet connections on it. It can do Modbus. It can do uh, analog and digital signals in and out. So you can uh, almost run it like a, a PLC. So right now you can see I've got about one app going through it. So that would be the the charger because there's nothing else is on. And then like the phantom mode for the miscellaneous equipment in here. So I guess we will start turning on some loads and uh, see what we got. So air conditioning would be nice. So we'll turn on the uh, cool cat. So it's just kind of getting started here right now. A 15 amp circuit is really only good for uh, 12 amps continuous. And it can handle a bit of surge like that motor starting or compressor starting. So we're about four and a half amps right now. And it's conceivable that you might have your uh, fridge on. So leave this on. AC 
bear with me, the controls on this thing don't work very well. Let's see if this kicks in or not. Yeah, it's on AC. Started to bring up the load. So it looks like it's relatively minor. It only came up by uh, three quarters of an amp to run that heating element in there. Now this is a pretty big microwave. It's uh, one kilowatt, which is like ginormous, power-wise anyway. So turn that on. So we're getting there now, so we got almost 10 amps to load. And you see how the voltage has dropped, right? So it was at 123 previously. Now it's dropped down to 112. So the lower the voltage, the more current you need to draw for resistant loads. So uh, that's something to keep an eye on. So this power meter can do a, a bunch of different things. We can take a, a look at it. But like I said, it's very unlikely you would buy one of these. Scratch my head why that doesn't say anything. All right, so we're drawing 4.4 kilowatts right now. And you can tell the power factor is reasonable. It's almost unity power factor. Make the generator, so I'd be making it up if I said how many kilowatts the generator was. I can't remember right now. I think it's pretty close to what we're looking at right now. I know the generator can run the air conditioner and the microwave at the same time. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here I don't have programmed. But for uh, setting up the uh, power... Where is it? So it's a single phase setup. The rotation doesn't matter. You can't even change that, I don't know why. So I had to set it to 240 to 120, even though I'm putting uh, 120 into this thing. For whatever reason, that's what it makes it happy. Then the current transformer is a 30 to five. So when you have 30 amps going through the current transformer, it sends five amps up to the power meter. So that works good. change all those things and then this has uh, I think I mentioned it has like a no we just tripped the breaker and there you go all right too bad I didn't maybe you saw what how many amps we were pulling when we did that now the uh, fridge is trying to switch over to gas but it's not going to be successful All right, we'll have to go inside and turn the breaker back on. But anyway, I wanted to show you this. This meter is a quarter din. I have a, uh, a meter plate here somewhere. So I'm gonna be making a, a console somewhere in the bottom here to house all of this stuff, because it's not professional at all right now. This is just kind of proof of concept stage. But then the other reason is this still works because it's running on the 12 volt DC stepped up to uh, 24 volts. I got a little power converter right there. It'll step up power supply. And then for the wiring, this will apply to pretty much everything. But basically, you've got your line and your L2, which is your neutral. And you want to. Uh, when you're setting up your current transformer, like the whatever the designation is on the primary side, the, like the one side 
or the polarity dot is going to be facing the line and then the load will be on this side and then if you have like an X1 and an X2 then the X1 is going to go into I1 sometimes it's uh, going to be H1 and H2 depending on the CT I bought a cheap Chinese CT in that it was like cheap like no name off of eBay Chinese kind of thing because it had pretty good uh, specs for um, accuracy. I couldn't find anything reasonably priced and reasonably sized that could measure 30 amps because most of the time when well, you have a revenue meter you're not going to be measuring a 30 amp power supply. And then you have, in this case, you have to bond all of the spare signals together to the neutral. And it's very important that you ground the one leg of the CT because if you ever open circuit that CT the voltage is going to go very high so you have to keep it bonded to ground. So that's like a mandatory thing. And then it's good to have a, uh, what I did was I put a circuit breaker on the L1 leg going into the console. I don't think they really mentioned that in here but you can see it's got two Ethernet ports digital port and uh, analog ports there I think. So it would be nice if I could get some more analog inputs for this because then I could measure things like temperature and uh, pressures and whatnot with it and do some data logging in it because it has a fair amount of memory in it. So I think that's all I'm going to show you for right now. If anybody has any questions feel free to ask. This is not a simple project necessarily because uh, you need to know what you're doing. It could be dangerous if you make a mistake. And realistically, you should have an electrical inspection on something like this. For running the wires up into the uh, cabinet, I just used some Legrand, what do they call it, like a TV wire trough or something like that. That way it doesn't take up too much space, otherwise you've run a bunch of conduits up there and it's not going to look too great. So, hopefully that's interesting. Thank you for watching. I just have a little bonus footage, so I've got the uh, shelves whipped back in here for the time being. This power meter is just on its side so it'll fit. The uh, Legrand wire trough looks good. It's only like a half an inch thick, so it fits nice with the bed made. So we're going to run the uh, Cool Cat through its paces. So right now the fan is set to automatic and we are at 0.8 amps. So that's just the charger running right now. So to, you can turn this to low. I'll let you do the math. You can watch the uh, voltage drop as well. So now we'll turn it on to uh, high. Not a big difference. Put it back on automatic. And I'll put it on cool. So 0.8 was the base. So that's with cooling on. See it wavers a little bit. This is kind of neat because it'll tell you uh, from a battery capacity how much uh, energy you would be using if you wanted to uh, run off an inverter. It would be unrealistic to do this off an inverter and battery for any length of time, but you have to figure out the efficiency and it could tell you how many kilowatt hours you're using up. I'm not going to put on the furnace because the 
gas is not on. So we're on uh, heat pump now. A bit less than the air conditioner. It's about probably 70 degrees outside right now. 20 degrees Celsius. I guess we could put on the uh, furnace just for a minute. It's not going to work though, obviously. Now this is tricky because the fan is going to run for a while, but I can hear the furnace running right now, so the fan and the furnace are running, which is not really ideal. Alright, so the fan is only drawing, or the furnace is only drawing like 0.2 amps. I don't know if it's AC or DC to begin with, so you have to look at the specs on that for the furnace. So, I guess we will turn that off. That'll run for a little bit. You see it's pretty minimal. All right, let's try with our unit here. This is what knocked us out the last time. So it appears to be about 4 amps. Let's stop that. And I was kind of surprised that how many watts the uh, this guy was? All right, so let's flip over to AC. So the furnace fan's still running. So there's a little bit of load there for that. So my understanding of the heating element on the AC side of the uh, fridge is bigger than the DC heating element. So if you were traveling, you would benefit from running the uh, fridge off of an inverter. You get more cooling just because you've got a bigger heating element in the system. But it's still not a very big uh, wattage draw as you can see there. I don't think there's anything else AC to run in here that I can think of. Just the charger, that really depends on uh, how drained your batteries are. Like this is like a 50 amp DC charger. 30 amps can go into the uh, electrical panel, no, out into the battery. So it sort of saves 20 amps for the uh, house panel. There's a circuit breaker on the output. So as you can see, it's sitting around 0.8. It's not really wavering, but the voltage definitely goes up and down as you're loading it up. And we're right at outside of the house, right? So if you were in some campground with some cheesy wiring system, your voltage might be dragged way down. So you, something you can keep an eye on if you were of interest to do that. So I guess we'll wrap up the video for real this time. So thank you for watching.